This video is edited and uploaded by Basil Kadika, so don't try to copy it. Ha ha ha! In this video, he is going to give description about places for visiting in Kathmandu, Nepal. Well. There are tons of places to visit in Kathmandu but in this video he is concentrating to main places to visit with their detailed description. So for this you have to watch full video. The Swayambunath Stupa, meaning the self-created Stupa, aka the Monkey Temple, is found on a hilltop to the west of Kathmandu. Second in importance only to the Baudanath Stupa, the Swayambunath Complex, founded by King Manadeva during the 5th century, contains a stupa, temples, shrines, Tibetan monastery, museum and library. The stupa, regilded with 20 kilograms of gold in 2010, has a large white dome at its base, above which are painted four sets of Buddha's eyes and eyebrow. Further up the stupa are found four pentagonal toran, gateways, and 13 tiers leading to the stupa's golden spire. Monkeys live to the northwest of the complex, they are said to be holy because they grew out of head lice living in the bodhisattva, enlightened person, Manjusri's long hair. Visitors should also inspect the carvings of the five panch buddhas found on each side of the stupa, the two lions guarding the stupa's entrance, the adjacent Harati Devi temple, Shandipur, a small temple northwest of the main stupa, and the Pratapur and Anantapur shrines. We recommend accessing Swayambunath by the 365 worn steps that lead up the eastern side of the hill. The start of this climb is marked by a 12-foot Tibetan prayer wheel and three painted Buddha statues. The stupa offers great views over Kathmandu, especially in the early evening. To catch the Tibetan pilgrims, you will need to arrive before 9 a.m. Where? Found on a hillside on the west of Kathmandu, about 20 minutes by taxi from the Thamel area. This perfectly proportioned monument rises through a whitewashed dome to a gilded spire, from where four faces of the Buddha stare out across the valley in the cardinal directions. The Nasa-like squiggle below the piercing eyes is actually the Nepali number ek, one, signifying unity, and above is a third eye signifying the all-seeing insight of the Buddha. The site was shaken severely by the 2015 earthquake but the main stupa sustained only superficial damage. The entire structure of the stupa is symbolic, the white dome represents the earth, while the 13-tiered, beehive-like structure at the top symbolizes the 13 stages that humans must pass through to achieve nirvana. The base of the central stupa is ringed by prayer wheels embossed with the sacred mantra Om Mani Padma Hum, Hail to the Jewel in the Lotus. Pilgrims circuiting the stupa spin each one as they pass by. Fluttering above the stupa are thousands of prayer flags, with similar mantras, which are said to be carried to heaven by the winds. Set in ornate plinths around the base of the stupa are statues representing the Dhyanai Buddhas, Verokana, Ratnasambhava, Amitabha, Amitya City, Amoga City, and Aksavya, and their Shakti, consorts. These deities represent the five qualities of Buddhist wisdom. Patan is situated to the south of Kathmandu, and only separated from the capital by the Bagmati River. It is the second largest town in the Kathmandu Valley. Patan has an ancient history, with the corners of the town being marked by stupas erected in around 250 BC. Research by Lonely Plant suggests that Patan has a greater concentration of temples per square meter than either Kathmandu or Backtaper. Patan's most interesting attractions include the Golden Temple, together with a number of tortoises found in its courtyard, the five-story Kumbashwar Temple, dating from 1392, and the Red Mahendranath Temple, dating from the 17th century, and containing carvings of a number of weird and wonderful animals. The Patton Museum is housed in a carefully restored Mala Royal Palace on Patton Darbar and exhibits about 200 examples of bronze or copper gilt statues of Buddhist or Hindu deities. Opened in 1997 by King Barendra, 
The building's 14-year restoration was funded by the Austrian government. Highlights include a 12th century seated Buddha, named Shakyamuni, made of copper alloy and gilt and the museum's Keshav Narayan Chow courtyard, complete with wood carvings, red brick facade and golden door and window. The works are accompanied by helpful explanatory information, produced by the eminent cultural historian Mary S. Slusser. The Patton Museum Cafe, situated in the peaceful garden, offers good quality snacks and light meals, where Patton is situated about 3 km's from Kathmandu Thamel region, and can be accessed easily by bus, taxi or rickshaw. Formerly the residence of the Mala Kings, the section of the palace surrounding Keshav Narayan Chowk now houses one of the finest collections of religious art in Asia. The museum is a national treasure and an invaluable introduction to the art, symbolism and architecture of the valley. You need at least an hour, preferably two, to do this place justice, and it's worth taking a break at the museum calf before diving in for another round. Some rooms and exhibits were damaged in the 2015 earthquake, but the building was stabilized and has reopened to the public. The collection is displayed in a series of brick and timber rooms, linked by steep and narrow stairways. There are informative labels on each of the hundreds of statues, carvings and votive objects, allowing you to put a name to many of the deities depicted at temples around the valley. There are also some interesting displays on the techniques used to create these wonderful objects, including the art of repasse and the lost wax method of casting. The top floor houses some fascinating photos of Patton at the end of the 19th century. The museum has a shop selling reproductions of some of the works Six on the orders of King Bhupendra Mala, Pashupadinath is Nepal's most important Hindu temple. Constructed in the pagoda style of architecture, Pashupadinath stands on the banks of the Bagmati River, has a distinctive gilded rooftop, intricately carved rafters, featuring members of Shiva's family, and four silver-plated main doors surrounded by statues of deities. Pashupadinath reaches a maximum height of 24 meters, and is presided over by Piasts called Badas and Akif priest called Mool Bad or Ravel. Non-Hindus are not allowed inside the temple, though a glimpse of Shiva's bull, Nandi, can be caught from outside the western entrance. There is nonetheless much to see. The temple's exterior and its surrounding buildings are worth a look. Sadhus, Hindu holy men, Watch the world go by, traders hawk marigolds, incense and conch shells, and the river banks of the Bagmati River are a popular place for cremations. Whilst the ghats in front of the temple were reserved for the cremation of royalty, four other ghats to the south of the nearby bridges are in regular use. There is often a cremation in progress, with a shrouded body lifted on top of a log fire with surprisingly little ceremony. Cremations are followed by ritual bathing in the river. Undiminished by the earthquake, the pagoda-style Pashupadinath temple was constructed in 1696 but this has been a site of Hindu and Buddhist worship for far longer. Only Hindus are allowed to enter the compound of the famous main temple, but you can catch tantalizing glimpses of what is going on inside from several points around the perimeter wall. From the main gate on the west side of the compound, you can view the mighty golden behind of an enormous brass statue of Nandi, Shiva's bull. Inside the shrine, hidden from view, is a black, four-headed image of Pashupati. If you climb the terraces to the west of the temple, you can look down on the gilded rooftop. There are more views from the top of the terraces on the east side of the Bagmati, inside the temple complex. If you follow the road running south from the side entrance to the temple, you will pass the Panch Deval, five temples, a former temple complex that survived the quake and acts as a social welfare center for destitute elderly Nepalese. Behind the Vatsala Durga Temple, 
The Pashupatinath temple is dedicated to Shiva as Pashupati and is a replica of the main shrine at Pashupatinath, originally built by King Yakshamala in 1475 or 1482. It is the oldest temple in the square. Like many temples, the roof struts feature erotic images, but what exactly the dwarf is doing with that bowl takes things to a new level. Museum, a.k.a. Narayan Hatidarbar, served as the primary residence of Nepal's monarchy for over a century until 2008. It was here that, in June 2001, King Barendra, Queen Aizwarya and six other royals were shot dead by Crown Prince Dipendra before Dipendra turned his weapon on himself. The apparent motive was revenge, after the king and queen refused to approve the prince's marriage intentions. Berenda's replacement, King Yanendra, was deeply unpopular, and Nepalis voted to abolish the monarchy in 2008. The new parliament promptly gave Gyanendra 15 days to vacate the palace. The opening of the palace museum by Nepal's prime minister in February 2009 was a highly symbolic event. The palace comprises 52 rooms, 19 are open to the public, and occupies 74 acres. It was designed by American architect Benjamin and Paul in the style of a contemporary pagoda. The museum showcases the belongings of former royalty, such as pictures of Queen Elizabeth II taken when the Windsors were on friendly terms with the Shah dynasty. Visitors comment on the palace's chintzy decor, including extensive gold plating, numerous chandeliers and a large tiger skin rug. The museum's extensive grounds are open to visitors, Look out for fruit bats and 20-foot tall bamboo. One morbid feature is of note, the museum's buildings and grounds identify the places in which members of the royal family perished during the 2001 massacre, including the place on a small footbridge where Dipendra shot himself. One of the most interesting things to do in Kathmandu, full of chintzy meeting rooms and faded 1970s glamour, the palace interior is more gaudy than opulent. The highlights are the impressive throne and banquet halls and the modest royal bedrooms. Check out the great armchair with built-in speakers. Stuffed garial, tigers and rhino heads line the halls next to towering portraits of earlier shahs and photos of the royal family taken with other doomed leaders, Yugoslavia's Tito. Romania's Ceausescu and Pakistan's Zia ul Haq. The locations where Prince Dipendra massacred his family in 2001 are rather morbidly marked, though the actual building was rather suspiciously leveled after the crime. Bullet holes are still visible on some of the walls. Just as interesting as the building are the locals' reactions to it, as they peek at a regal lifestyle that for centuries they could only have dreamed about. Cameras and bags are not allowed inside the complex. It is one of the holiest and most recognizable sites in Kathmandu. Assigned UNESCO World Heritage Status in 1979, Baudanath, a.k.a. the Bauda, Chorten Chempo and Kasak Hatyais, has a diameter of 120 meters, making it the largest temple in Nepal. The stupa is built on an octagonal base, is surrounded by prayer wheels, and has colorful prayer flags draped from its 36-meter central spire. Baudanath is rich in symbolism. It has five statues of Gyanai Buddhas, representing the five elements, earth, fire, water, air and ether, Nine levels, representing Mount Meru, the mythical peak at the center of the Buddhist cosmos, and 13 rings from its base to its apex, representing the steps to enlightenment or nirvana. Baudanath is the religious center of Nepal's Tibetan, Buddhist community, and is surrounded by around 50 monasteries and shops settling Tibetan artifacts. About 15% of the population are Buddhists. Look out for Tibetan monks, with shaven heads and maroon robes, and pilgrims spinning prayer wheels and buying yak butter and sampa, roasted barley flour. Be careful to observe Tibetan custom by walking around the stupa in a 
clockwise direction. There has been a stupa on this site since Tibetan King Songs Ten Gampo converted to Buddhism in around 600 AD. The first stupa at Bodnath was built sometime after AD 600, when the Tibetan king, Song Tsen Gampo, converted to Buddhism. In terms of grace and purity of line, no other stupa in Nepal comes close to Bodnath. From its whitewashed dome to its gilded tower painted with the all-seeing eyes of the Buddha, the monument is perfectly proportioned. The stupa had a lucky escape in the 2015 earthquake and repairs to the tower are expected to be completed within a few months. According to legend, the king constructed the stupa as an act of penance after unwittingly killing his father. The first stupa was wrecked by Mughal invaders in the 14th century. So the current stupa is a more recent construction. The highly symbolic construction serves in essence as a three-dimensional reminder of the Buddha's path towards enlightenment. The plinth represents earth, the kumbha, dome, is water, the harmika, square tower, is fire, the spire is air and the umbrella at the top is the void or ether beyond space. The 13 levels of the spire represent the stages that a human being must pass through to achieve nirvana. Stupas were originally built to house holy relics and some claim that Bodnath contains the relics of the past Buddha, Kashyapa, while others say it contains a piece of bone from the skeleton of Siddhartha Gautama, the historical Buddha. Around the base of the stupa are 108 small images of the Dhyanai Buddha Amitabha. 108 is an auspicious number in Tibetan culture, and a ring of prayer wheels, set in groups of 4 or 5 into 147 niches. To reach the upper level of the plinth, look for the gateway at the north end of the stupa, beside a small shrine dedicated to Harati, Ajima, the goddess of smallpox. The plinth is open from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. in summer, offering a raised viewpoint over the tide of pilgrims surging around the stupa. Note the committed devotees prostrating themselves full length on the ground in the courtyard on the east side of the stupa. Late afternoon is the best time to visit, after tour groups have departed. The Losar, Tibetan New Year, Celebrations are held here in February or March.